yeah. Thank you so much for being here instead of like huddled over a bacon sandwich, which let's face it is by all the three yours today. Um, so I'll try to keep this entertaining. I'll also try not to throw in too much opportunity to swearing, but anyone who saw me talk for an hour and a half about robots the other day will know that I just can't fucking help myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start by sticking my hand in this jug of water, so please make you drink from this afterwards. Uh, and can somebody start, who's got a timer on their phone hand this? It's ten o'clock sharp. Yeah, I need to. I'm going to need more actors. Oh, I've got a stopwatch. I've got a stopwatch. Sorry. Stopwatch will be great. Okay, so when you're ready, go. Right, why am I standing here, sitting here, with my hand in a bucket of ice water? Is it because I have a masochist? Well, my personal life has gone through bad business. Um, is it because I'm hungover? And this is a fantastic cure for hangovers. Um, doesn't seem to be working yet. Uh, or is it because this is an homage to one of my favourite scientific experiments of all time? Uh, some of you might have heard of an experiment in Keele University about three or four years ago, which looked at the effect of swearing on pain management. Now, the idea of this experiment was to demonstrate whether or not swearing actually made pain feel worse, or whether it meant that you could deal with it better and longer. And I have to say, I'm managing to not swear, but this is about as much as I can stand. What we are now? 45, 45 seconds. seconds, okay, that's pathetic. But well, like every good picture we got in the room with Charles is. Last time I did that, I did it on Radio 4, which made really awesome radio. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone believe I was doing that? Um, but the reason that I was interested in this is that I started off my research career uh, doing artificial intelligence and robotics. And I was very, very interested in how we might make machines that think or act or could in some way augment the abilities of human beings. And I realised after a few years of studying the logic and mathematics, and what we actually really needed to know if we could do that is how the human brain works. So I got very interested in neuroscience and spent a long time reading the journals. And I kept coming across papers like the one that had the ice water experiment in, papers that took a very serious, very scholarly look at swearing. And I realised two things. That if I wanted to be an evil mad scientist that tortures people by making them put their hands in buckets of ice water, I picked the wrong major. And second of all, that if I want my robots to not throw us, uh, do some massive overthrow and, and up us like Skynet, there are still some seats down here and a couple there if anyone who needs to find a seat. No, groovy. Um, so yeah, the other thing I realised is that if we want to uh, not have a robot uprising, it'd be a really good idea to teach our robots how to swear. That probably sounds pretty flippant and very, very silly, um, but actually, we're not the only intelligences on planet Earth that swear. The reason that we know this is that there are a bunch of other primates who can talk to use sign language. Now, some of these, you might have seen a project near recently or read some of it, uh, something about this particular project. Um, some of it is very much rote signing, the kind of signing um, that perhaps a, a dog would do when begging for a, a, a treat, you know, sort of certain gestures that they know are correlated with very simple rewards. However, there are other more ambitious projects, uh, including the uh, take a chimp home and treat it as one of your child, your children projects, um, that have actually looked at uh, gesture and, and signing as a means of communication. And there's a chimp called Washo, there was a chimp called Washo, now it's now deceased, who over the series of, uh, over the period of her life managed to learn about 350 signs and actually pass those signs on to her son Lumi. So we've got both communication and transmission of this signing, uh, this signing inventory. And she could use it to talk about abstract concepts or concepts in the future. This wasn't merely begging for food. This is saying things like Washo won't go out, Washo wants to go for a walk. Um, and the problem is that she was living with this family and they, you know, they were trying to treat her fairly human in a human-like way, but of course um, she was an experimental chimp and was made to do loads of behavioural stuff, kind of like a kid being sent to school, before she was allowed to go out and play. And this would sometimes get her very annoyed. So there's a guy called Roger Foots who is the sort of leading um, primate behavioural scientist who would go in and visit Washo and say things like, you know, hi, hi Roger, out, you know, you know go and do the experiments first. And she'd go, bad Roger, dirty, dirty. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see like in the inflection of the signing, I'm afraid he teaches Makaton. 
because uh, she, which is a, a sign language which many of you may know, and she taught me the difference between this sign and this sign. One of which is about the pleasurable act, and the other one is about telling you to go do that to yourself. And she said there is a big difference between and <laughs> um, so you can tell the difference as well when you look at things like Washo uh, signing that, that there is an emotive context to some of the signs that she's using. When she uses the words signs dirty dirty, she's essentially doing what most of her fellow primates would do by actually flinging the feces around. She's expressing her massive displeasure at not being allowed to do what she wants to do. Does this count as swearing? Well, it depends on your definition, and there is no hard and fast definition, but most of the people researching it uh, use a couple of uh, hallmarks, and if these two hallmarks are present, then we pretty much say that the language being used is swearing. The first is, it should be used to convey some kind of emotive content, usually negative emotive content, but not always. Uh, so things like frustration, anger, pain, sometimes elation, often surprise. Uh, so there's a world of difference between fuck me and fuck you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think mean, you're still not running the timer, are you? But I think that was probably about two and a half minutes before the swearing started. You know? <laughs> Sorry. Um, and the other thing is, you should talk about... Oh, six minutes. <laughs> um, and the other thing is, it should refer to something that's taboo in our language. Now, you see, can we say that primates other than humans have taboos? Well, we don't know about Washo. We're not quite sure how um, relaxed she was about the, the subject of shifting everywhere. But we do know that Lucy, another um, livered home ape who was brought up by a very wonderful hippie New Age family in California, uh, fostered this chick, took her home. Um, she had the habit of, when she was displeased, of taking a crap on the carpet. So one day Roger comes in and he's like, Lucy, who's this? What's this? And she signs Dirty, dirty. The word for Who's dirty, dirty? Is it? She goes. Sue. Now Sue was his PhD student. <laughs> 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 I'm a PhD student. It's stressful. But it's not that bloody. <laughs> <laughs> so we know that this is a taboo. She's prepared to lie to try to shift the blame on someone else. She had an excellent theory of mind because her next guess was that it might have been Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we she know at least that primates have to choose about we need to bodily excreta and are prepared to use it, both the substance and the science for it once they learn it, um, as a way of insulting, controlling, communicating a, a negative emotional state. So what's that got to do with robots? Well, if we want uh, the systems that we're working with or people that we work, we're working with to be able to warn us when they're reaching the end of their tether, when they're running out of emotional or cognitive resources, swearing is a way really good shortcut, uh, unless you use it too much, like me. Um, so let's go back to the experiment from Keel in the UK, the reason why I was sticking my hand in here earlier. Um, there's a fantastic research group at Keel University, and if anyone has the desire to torture people with the interest of science, I strongly suggest you go and work with this group. They are amazing. Um, and the guy behind it all, um, so you can follow him on Twitter as Psychology Rich, um, he thought that all of his colleagues were wrong about swearing. His colleagues kept saying that if you swear when you're in pain, you're basically regressing to a hopeless and infantile state. Swearing isn't being all clever, swearing is our way of saying, I can't cope with this. By saying I can't cope with this, psychologically, you're making it less likely that you cope with this. You know, read all of this literature. He was at home building a shed, hit himself on the car with a hammer, and went, fuck this for a game of soldiers. <laughs> and decided that probably um, that swearing was not maladaptive, that the findings could be um, summarised as maladaptive in my arts. Um, so he had about 60 uh, undergraduate students repeat this experiment of sticking their hand in a bucket of ice water as long as possible, and they were given one or another type of word. So, they were asked, give me four words to describe a table, and then give me four things that you would say if you injured yourself. So the table words might be something like you know, flat, sturdy, uh, useful, brown, um, and I might say, if I hit myself, I go, ah, Jesus, fuck, ouch. And they go, okay, what's the first swear word on the list? And they did include blasphemy and swear words, but we'll come on to that a bit later. So they go, what's the corresponding table word? Sturdy, I think. 
And then I'd be assigned to either the swearing or non-swearing group. So if I was lucky, I'd get to put my hands in ice water and go, Jesus, 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 all the way through. If not, I'd have to stand there going, sturdy, sturdy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, to be honest, I can't help thinking that perhaps one of the confounding factors in this experiment is that the people in the table control group bailed out early because they felt like such pillows. <laughs>